everybody. I'm Miss Karen from Adams Memorial Library. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. This is the third video in our December Inquire Within series. And for today, we thought we would be like one of our favorite PBS Kids characters, Luna from Let's Go Luna. So as you probably know, on Let's Go Luna, Luna and her friends travel around the world and they visit different countries. And sometimes they celebrate holidays in the different places that they visit. So that's what we thought we would do. We thought we would do three crafts with you today and two are based on Christmas celebrations and one's based on a New Year's celebration. So we're gonna do crafts that are based on things from Denmark and from the Philippines and from Japan. The Christmas ones are from Denmark and the Philippines. The New Year's one is from Japan. So if you have one of our Inquire Within bags, you already have the materials that you'll need to do the crafts today. And if you don't have one of the bags and you would like to, to do the craft at home, you can email us at kids at adamslib.org and we would be happy to send you the templates and then you can print them out and do the craft that way. So thanks for watching, let's get started. we're going to do is make Christmas heart baskets and they're made in different Scandinavian countries and we're talking about ones from Denmark today. Now the traditional story is that these were first made by the, the Danish fairy tale writer Hans Christian Andersen who wrote uh, Thumbelina and uh, The Little Mermaid and I don't know if it's true that he was the first person to make them but he did do a lot of paper crafting so he very well may have been. But when you make one today, you can decorate your tree with it. You can put a nice note for somebody inside. I read you could put a gift card inside, hand it to somebody that way. Here's some that are a little fancier. This one has more strips to it, so it's got more weaves. This one has kind of a star shape. But we're gonna make ones like this today. So if you have one of the kits, you already have the materials. You need a white paper and the red paper with the template and another strip that will be the handle and the glue stick. You're going to need some scissors to cut this out. You might need some tape. If everything, anything gets ripped, you can just tape it, tape it up and fix it. Because friends, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little tricky, but we'll get it. You just practice it and you can do it. Because I practice it a lot and I might still mess it up too. And if I do, Mr. Reed, who's editing the video, can just fix it <laughs> and we'll do it again. I told you in the first video that lots of people at the library were helping us do these, these bags for you. So Mr. Reed is helping us by editing the video. So thank you to Mr. Reed. Thank you to Miss Mary and Miss Laura and Miss Jen and Miss Rachel, who are all helping us put the bags together. And thank you to, to you for watching. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing you'll do is cut out these ovals because you're going to need one red and one white. You can make one, you can make a basket with the same color, but it's a little bit harder to weave it that way. It's harder to see what you're doing, I think. So you might want to start with the red and white ones. So once you've cut it out, you will need to fold it in half. Take the paper, fold it in half, line it up, do it that way. We're going to put them together like this and that's how it's going to make the heart shape. So you can see there's some lines on here and the line does not go all the way to the top and when you cut it you don't want to go all the way to the top either because it'll make your basket fall apart and that's when you might need the tape. You just tape it shut or tape the paper back together. So you want to cut on the line just to where it ends. So take the scissors, cut on the line, just like that. So you're gonna do that with a red and a white one, and then I'll show you how to weave them together. We wanna start by putting them together to make the heart shape, and then you can see how the weaving's going, going to go a little bit better. And I think it's going to be easier for me to show you how to weave them if I show you, if I do it on the table. So we're gonna do that next. Okay, when I took my paper, I actually folded it inside out. I had the lines here 
and I folded it the other way so the lines didn't show. You can do whatever you want. You can, if you want the lines showing, you can do it that way so you can see the black. If you don't, fold it inside out. And then, like I said, make it so it looks like a heart. And then where the top of the heart is, the round part, that's where we're going, going to start weaving. And you want it to be white, red, white, red, white, like that. So that's, that's why it's a little tricky. You gotta make sure you put a whole strip of paper in between the other part. So first, take a red part in one hand, the white in the other. You're going to take the red and go through the white. And then put it to the end. Then open up the red like this. And put the white one through the other way. We've got white, red, and then we need another white. So you take this white part and open it up again and put the red through. So the good part about this is you can tell if you messed it up because then it won't open up like a basket. It'll just be all closed shut and that's all you know. Then you take it apart and just try again. So we've got white, red, white on this line. So the next one we want red, white, red. So here's where it gets a little bit harder when you're doing the other rows, but we want this red to show. So we open up the red part Take the white strip through, like that. And then the opposite, open up the white part, take the red through, and then you kind of have to scooch it over so you've got enough room to work. Take this red one, open it up, put this white strip through. Just bend it around, try to get it through best you can. And like I said, if you rip it, that's what the tape's for. <laughs> you can fix it. Okay, so we've got two rows down, one to go. And this one again, we want it to be white, red, white. But if we don't feed it through, it's not gonna work as a basket. It'll be closed up at the end. So once again, we have to take this red strip and put it all the way inside this white one. So take this white one, open it up with your finger and feed the red one through. And this last row I think is the hardest, but you can do it, I know you can. Just take your time, feed it through, and then we'll straighten it out a little bit. A little wrinkled, but it works. So we have white, we want the red to show, but we need to put the white inside. So once again, open up the red strip, put the white part through, and then one more time, open up the white one and put the red part through. Like I said, it's a little bit tricky at the end because you just have to, Work it through a little bit like that. So there, and you can see it does open. So finish that weaving. You can just straighten it out a little bit. Line everything up. There you go. And then you'll take your handle and just glue it on in the inside. So put a little glue, put a little glue on one end. Glue that down, and then it'll be this outside part because you want it to go like a handle. Put a little glue on this side, and stick it to the other side of the heart. And there you go. You've made your heart basket. You can give it to somebody. You can use it as a decoration. You can put it on your tree. The other Christmas ornament that we're going to make are star ornaments that are based on Filipino parles. I just learned about these this year. These parles, I saw a picture and I thought they were so pretty. They are lanterns 
that are shaped like stars that people could carry in a procession. And it's a star and it's supposed to look like the Star of Bethlehem for Christmas. So these are very loosely based on that. If you have one of the kits, it's got the stars on the red paper, it's got some gold paper and gold string. And so this is, it's just designed so it'll look like, the gold paper will look like light shining through a lantern. So the first thing you'll do is cut out the red stars and it's just regular red construction paper. And then the second thing you will do is decide where you want your gold designs on it. You can do this two ways. You can make holes in the paper and then put the gold paper on, the, cut your holes in the red paper and glue or tape the gold paper behind. Or you can do it like I did this one, when I cut parts, I cut strips out of the gold and just glued it right on the front. So you can decide how you wanna do it. You can either cut your shapes out of the gold and glue them right on, or you can cut the shape out of the red and put the paper behind. So if you decide to do it that way, you take one of your red stars and you're gonna fold it in half. And oh, if you want it to be an ornament, you might not wanna do it this way. I did it like this. And if it was gonna be an ornament, it's gonna hang a little bit slanted. So this one is better. If you want it to be an ornament, you probably want one of the points to be at the top. Like this. So when you take your your red star and fold it in half. <laughs> Keep a point at the top. But otherwise, you just are gonna fold it in half and it's going to make two of the points meet and one be folded in half itself. Like this. And then if you've ever cut a paper snowflake, it'd be the same kind of thing. You wanna cut along the creased part and if you Cut it all the way through, again, what your tape's for, tape it back together. So this one that's in half is going to be the top of my star. So you can decide how you want to do it. You can make a heart shape, you can make circles, you can make triangles. So you're going to just cut parts out of here. And as long as you don't cut all the way through, you'll be good. You can cut little shapes, bigger shapes, however you want to do it. And then you're going to put the gold paper behind it so it'll show up and look like you have a shining lantern. So I've got some holes like that. And if I want to put any on the sides, you just fold it one more time and again, cut something on the crease part. And we'll see how this looks. I'll have holes like that. So then you take your gold paper, you can cut this into pieces and then just glue with your glue stick or tape them behind so it'll show through the red. Or like I said, you can draw a heart shape or a circle or a square on here and just glue it on the front. Like that. So once you've got it all set up the way you'd like it, you can take your gold paper, or I'm sorry, your gold string, gold cord, and loop it and just tape it on. And then you can hang it on your tree. You can hang it from the ceiling in front of a window, whatever you would like. And you can pretend that you have your own Filipino parl. Hi friends. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Mr. Alex and the country that I'm going to be talking about is Japan. Now, they do have Christmas in Japan, but it's a little bit different than it is here in the United States. And uh, let me tell you a bit about that. So in the United States, we tend to think of the big day for Christmas as December 25th. And we usually celebrate it with our families. Um, you might get together with your family and give gifts or have a big dinner or go to church. And there are lots of different Christmas traditions here in the United States. Uh, in Japan, the big night for Christmas is December 24th or Christmas Eve. And instead of cookies and milk, you might have Christmas cake, which is a type of strawberry shortcake. In addition, instead of a turkey dinner, the must-have Christmas dinner in Japan is Kentucky Fried Chicken. So while you're making your reservations and getting ready for Christmas throughout December, you might see our friend, Colonel Sanders, dressed up as Santa Claus. 
Now, we thought that it might be a little bit difficult to fit those Japanese Christmas traditions into your Inquire Within bag. So instead, I'm going to show you a Japanese New Year's craft called Nengajo. Let me show you what we'll need to make it. So New Year is a very important time in Japan where people will often reconnect with their families and friends as they get ready for the upcoming year. And whenever possible, the Japanese people love to visit family members that have helped them in the past year. And on New Year's Day, they tell them thank you. Now, maybe you live far away from your friends and family, and if that's the case, you might send them a Nengajo, or New Year's postcard. And many of the postcards are handmade and feature art of different Japanese symbols, such as, for instance, the zodiac animal for the new year. And since 2021 is the year of the ox, I drew this postcard with an ox on it. Some other options are to draw traditional Japanese symbols, such as Mount Fuji, as I drew here, or popular characters like Hello Kitty, which I drew on this postcard. And she is very popular in Japan. <laughs> now, if you have one of our Inquire Within bags, you will have some blank postcards inside and you can make your own Nengajo. Each of the postcards has this phrase written on the side, which is Akimashite Omedito Gozaimasu, which means Happy New Year in Japanese. And they also have space for you to draw your own design. So you can draw your own artwork, maybe using one of the themes that I talked about, or uh, your favorite PBS Kids character, or whatever it is that you want to draw at home. All of it's great. Then, on the back of each postcard, there is space for you to write a message to someone, and then you can have an adult help you mail it to that person just in time for New Year. Something to keep in mind if you are going to mail these as postcards is that you don't want to use anything uh, when you're decorating that is going to change the thickness. So this might not be the best project for, say, foam pieces. Uh, but if you have something like that that you really, really want to use, uh, that's okay. You just need to make sure that you put it into an envelope first. Now, maybe you're looking for other ways to celebrate uh, New Year like they do in Japan. And if that's the case, uh, you can start by cleaning your room. And I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but Japanese families will use the last few days of the year to clean up their entire house. And then uh, maybe you'll eat some noodles on New Year's Eve. The Japanese believe that the long, thin soba noodles represent a wish for a long and happy life in the new year. And finally, on New Year's Day, the first temple visit of the year is very important. And that's because it's time to pray for fortune in the new year. So, whether your New Year's celebrations look a lot like these or are completely different, I hope everyone watching has long life and good fortune in the New Year, too. I want to thank everybody for joining us on this trip around the world to celebrate different holidays today. And I also want to thank our friends at WQED and Clearview Federal Credit Union for making this awesome program possible. Don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for all sorts of updates about awesome programs that we're doing here at the library. And if you have pictures of anything that you've made for this or other programs, be sure to send them on over to kids at adamslib.org because we'd love to see them. Happy crafting and happy holidays!